Hey, it's Nell with the blog Joyous Garden and welcome or welcome back. If you like easy care house plants that have fabulous foliage, can take lower to moderate light, and don't take up a lot of room, stick around for this one. If you like videos about gardening, both indoors and outdoors, then you're in the right place. I have a lot more coming your way and a lot in the archives for you to check out. And this one is all about the watermelon peperomia. And uh, the I, I also do a blog post to go along with every video. It'll have actually more de details in the blog post. It'll be in the top of the description box down below and also on the website, joyousgarden.com. And on the table in the background is one of my Hoyas. I have 60 plus house plants. It's the only house plant that has aphids. It has orange aphids and I've been spraying it in the house and just not getting control of it because it's spring and they come out in spring. So I'm out here drenching it. So I, I just mentioned that because you might have aphids on some of your plants. I just updated a post about aphids and mealybugs. Identify them, how to control them. And then I did a separate video which hasn't posted yet on how to spray them and some tips on that. So you can check those out or you can check one out and one when it's coming out soon. There are many species and varieties of peperomies out there. Um, there is, I don't know how many are sold in the houseplant trade, maybe I'd guess 30, I'm not quite sure, maybe more, but I have seven of them. And I'm telling you this just because I live in Tucson, Arizona in the desert. I think the humidity today is about 20%. So we are a very dry climate, very sunny though. And even though these plants are native to the tropics and the subtropics, they do just fine here in the desert. Excuse me, it's spring. So there's a lot of bird action going on around here. Those woodpeckers are so noisy. Anyway, um, the leaves are sort of thick and a little bit fleshy and so are the stems. So they make great house plants. And here are a few of my other beautiful peperomias. I will leave a picture in the blog post along with their names in case you're interested. And I've also done a few other blog posts and videos on peperomias. I will leave the links for those in the description box down below. So size, this plant usually maxes out at about 12 inches by 12 inches. You can see this size of mine. It'll get a little bit, um, little flippy floppy over time, but that's part of its charm. Stays sort of compact here, but then it goes, ah! So it's not a big plant, so it's great if you have a small space. Growth rate. I found this one to be slow to moderate. I live, as I said, in a sunny, warmer climate so mine is a little bit more on the moderate side it might be slow for you they are built built as a slow grower so don't expect it to grow really fast but that's great because it it won't take up a lot of room and how this plant is used is mainly as a tabletop plant i've also seen it in terrariums also and dish gardens so on to light and exposure. As I said, that this one can take lower to moderate light. I've got mine in bright light, but it's more on the moderate side. If it's too low, it's not going to grow. If it's too high, if it gets direct sun, it'll burn. Now, in terms of watering, which is another very important care point, I can't tell you exactly how much because I don't know what conditions yours is growing under, but I will tell you how I water mine. I water it when it's about three quarters of the way dry. Uh, right now it is mid-April. As I said, it's we get a lot of sun here, so I probably water it about every six to seven days just because it's in a smaller pot. You, in a different climate, will probably not, will not need to water it as often, so it, it just depends on what uh, type of 
temperatures and what your light exposure is. So it's time to focus on the fabulous foliage of this plant and not on me. As you can see why it's called watermelon peperomia because it looks like watermelon skin, just beautiful. And it has these gorgeous dark red leaves too, I mean stems. <laughs> and these are the flowers. It flowered for a long time and it's on the tail end of the flowering, but that's what those are. They are the flowers of a peperomia. Okay, on to fertilizer. This plant I fertilize and feed the same way I do all my house plants. I give it a combination of worm compost and compost in the spring, top it. And then throughout the growing season, we have a long growing season here, so I probably do about five times I will fertilize it alternately with Eleanor's VF11 and Maxi. So, uh, because as I said, plants do a lot of growing here, so I like to give them a little extra oomph. For you, fertilizing twice a year might be fine. So I'm gonna talk about temperature and humidity. As I always say for house plants, if your house is comfortable for you, it'll be so for your plants also. And in terms of humidity, this plant does prefer it higher because it is a subtropical, tropical plant, but they do well, all the peperomies I have anyway, do just fine in the dry air. So I think I would say that it tolerates lower humidity just fine. Oh, and I've done a whole post on humidity and house plants because I have a couple of tabletop humidifiers that I use. I'll also spray this off every once in a while with, you know, water just to give it a little shower to uh, help to temporarily up the ante on the humidity factor. So on to soil and repotting. I'm going to be repotting this plant soon. The soil, it's, it's in a soil mix that came from the grower and a lot of peat. I want to put it in a better mix because I'm having to water it too. Often spring, summer are the best times to repot the optimum times. I also do, do it into early fall because I have a longer growing season. And I am going to plant it in half potting soil and half of my DIY succulent and cactus mix, which has a lot of cocoa qua and cocoa chips in it. I will leave alternate mixes for this plant in the blog post. Now in terms of pests, my peperomias have never gotten any, but I would imagine that they are susceptible to mealybugs just because those leaves are so soft and fleshy and perhaps aphids and, um, aphids and what's the other thing I'm trying to think of? Aphids, aphids, mealybugs and spider mites. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> So in terms of pets, like cats and dogs, this plant is considered to be non-toxic to pets. So you can uh, display this in your home and if you have a cat or a dog, you don't have to worry about it. Just, just know that if they chew too many leaves or too many stems of anything, it could make them sick, but it's non-toxic. So that's it. This is a really, Sweet, beautiful, easy care plant. It's very popular right now. So if you're looking for a plant that will add a lot to your home and doesn't require too much maintenance, this is it. So as usual, there will be more information in the blog post. I'm going to do a short video and post on repotting this plant also so stay tuned for that and i have done other posts on peperomias which i will leave down below for you so i hope you have found this to be helpful as usual i thank you for all your likes and your subscribes i really appreciate them if you like videos about gardening indoors and outdoors be sure to come back for more and now let's get into our gardens our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. As always, I thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.